Hey everyone and welcome to a Mono Director tutorial. In this video I'm going to show you how to create movies with Mono Director and all the different types of things you can do with the props that are in the pack. For example, the Propifier and the Gimbal Cam. These are two tools that you can use to make some really cool cinematics and I think some people might not be able to get it straight away. So today we're going to explain how you can use these to make some amazing cinematics. Let's get into it. And make sure to check the timestamps if you want to see a certain part of the video. And some of these features are absent in the Quest standalone version of Monodirector because they are physically impossible to implement. So you can find your Monodirector menu in your Bone menu tab in your settings. Then for not enough photons you can find Monodirector. This is where you can find all of the stuff you can use with Monodirector. And if we go to settings and camera, this is where you can find your different camera settings. You can of course have your normal first person, you can have your free cam, you can have a head camera which makes it so you're in first person but have a smooth look around. And there's also the handheld option. If there is a gimbal cam spawned in, this will make it so your camera will go onto the gimbal cam. And it should look something like this. Minus the endless loop of screens because there's two gimbal cams active at once. So with the gimbal cam, you have a screen down the bottom which accurately will represent your monitor. And you will also have a screen that is the same up at the top. Making it super easy for you to see what you are recording without actually needing to look up at your monitor all the time. This is a very useful tool and I'll show you how to use it while also recording yourself in just a second. Okay, so first up, I'm gonna show you how to actually record a clone of yourself. In the Monodirector menu, you're gonna to wanna to come to playback and simply hit record. There'll be a three second countdown and now I am recording myself. If I just walk over here, turn around, do a little wave and then simply go back to the same menu and hit stop. And if I go back to the same menu and simply hit play, then as you can see, it'll play the recording that I just did. So now I should teach you about the proper fire. This is the tool you can use to make it look like your clones are moving stuff. It can sometimes be a bit hard to get used to, so I'm gonna try and explain it the best I can for you guys. So the proper fire has two options, that is the prop mode and remove mode. And it's just as the same as the constrainer, you just have to press the menu button and it will change. So what does prop mode do exactly? Well, if I go over to these barrels for an example and propify this one, you'll see the small little modding icon above it. This indicates that this prop is propified so you can remember which ones you've already propified previously. These will disappear when you activate a recording in Monodirector 2. And also, you can simply remove it. So when propifying a prop, it will only sync this prop to the next recording you do. So for example, if I propify these two, but leave this one, look what happens when I record moving these. If we go and hit record there, the icons disappear, so these two are propified. Meaning that I can pick them up and move them over here. And if I were to move a third one that's not propified, well, let's see what happens. Okay, and that's where I'll stop my recording. All right, and as you can see here, sometimes the clones of yourself will spawn in a weird spot. This will be fixed as soon as you hit play or record, so don't worry about it. So now let's go and hit play and see what the proper fire did with the props. Here we go. As you can see, the barrels teleport back to where I put them, and that clone of myself can still interact with them but the third one retained its position because it wasn't propified. Meaning that now when my dude picks it up, you can just see nothing. And that's why you've got to be very cautious with what you propify. Because sometimes you can just have your guys ghosting movements and it looks kind of bad. So that might make you say, why can't you just propify everything? Well, that in itself is a problem and I'll show you why. When propifying a prop, it will only be influenced by the next actor and not all of them. Meaning that if I hit record here, I can currently interact with all these props and it will be recorded, but if a future clone tries to interact with these props, then it won't work. So let's hit record one more time and see if I can interact with these already propified props. Okay, so this is our third clone going in. And as you can see, if I try and grab any of these barrels or anything, it doesn't let me move them. 
and that's because they were propified to this clone specifically. So you have to get used to a routine where you propify the props you want your next clone to use, and then after you're finished recording that clone, you propify the props your next dude is going to use. It's a bit confusing for newcomers, but trust me, when you get the hang of it, you can make some awesome stuff. And in fact, I've picked up a few little tricks which you can do with the proper fire, which I'm going to show you right now. And once again, as an example of clearing the scene, we can head over to Mono Director, Actors, and clear the scene. This also gets rid of any proper fires if you clear the scene, rather than just delete Actors, meaning that all these props will now act normally again. And here I'll give you an example, if you just remove all actors instead of clearing the scene, these props will still be propified, and even though there's no actor, as you can see, the props are still acting as if an actor is interacting with them. So now we can combine the propifier and the gimbal cam to get some really good shots. Because one thing you might be wondering is, how can I make the camera move around while I'm also moving? Well, that's where actors come in once again. With this trick, you're going to want to take your proper fire, propify the gimbal cam itself, and then we can record our camera angles as this cameraman, as you'll see. So this shot is now being captured as I'm recording. And as you'll see in the final result, we can basically predetermine a camera path that we won't have to control ourselves. And then I'm going to turn the camera around for a selfie. And that's where we can end our recording. Now I'm going to go to my camera settings and set it to handheld. So my camera will go onto the gimbal cam. As you can see on the screen, the camera's on there. So when hitting record, we now have our cameraman set up with the gimbal cam. And as you can see, he can freely record me while I do whatever movements I want. It's really hard to interact with NPCs using actors. So that's why you can use this trick to make the real you interact with NPCs while the camera's also moving. And here is that cute selfie. And now I'm sure you're all wondering especially how to control your camera. Well, that's going to need the help of your keyboard in the real world, just down there. Maybe, I don't know, wherever your keyboard is. Obviously, with the handheld gimbal cam, you can control the camera in the game. But if you want to go above and beyond and get some really high up shots or really low down shots or fast shots or something that a human could not do, then that's where we want to introduce the free cam. Once again, in camera settings, we can go over here and activate the free cam. Now the camera's floating in midair. So the controls for the free cam are super simple. WASD is obviously how you move around. A being to the left, D being to the right, S being backwards, and W being forwards. And to go up and down, you want to press Q to go down, and then E to go up. They're all in a nice little square up in the top of your keyboard. You can also hold down shift to go faster and you can adjust the speed in the settings also. And as you can see, this allows you to get any shot you could ever possibly want for filmmaking. And trust me, it is so helpful. You can also use your mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and out. And this zoom is also very impressive. As you can see right now, we're really far away from those tools down on that desk. But if we zoom all the way in, They actually completely retain their usual quality and the camera quality also stays completely amazing. It's very impressive that this is even possible and we can zoom all the way out and everything will retain its detail. And this could be a great way to capture your actors in the moment. You can get all the shots you could ever want. The camera can also allow for full flips. As you can see, I can flip completely upside down. And now I'm flying upside down. This is very trippy. If you hold down control instead of shift and then go to move your camera position with the mouse instead of looking around, you will do flips. So if you want to get an angled shot, you can do that. It does get very trippy though, I'll be honest. What am I even looking at anymore? Speaking of, why don't we look at some of the settings in the camera? Of course, we've looked at the different camera modes but we've also got stuff like head mode settings, free camera settings, and VFX. VFX is to simply turn off the lens distortion. As you can see, the camera goes a lot more flat if you turn that off. And you can also get rid of the chromatic aberration, which is the kind of the chromatic effect around the borders of the screen. So depending on what you're trying to record and whatever your preference is, you can turn these on and off depending on what you're going for. Now, free camera settings is quite an important one. Here is where you can set your slow speed and fast speed. 
Slow speed is the normal speed that your camera will move at, and fast speed is when you're holding shift like I previously mentioned. You can also turn your mouse sensitivity up, and if you don't know how to move your camera around with your mouse, you want to hold down the right click, and this will allow you to just freely move it wherever you want. Obviously turning this up will make it so your camera will sling around a lot more. Friction indicates how much it kind of takes to get the camera moving with your mouse. For an example, I'm going to turn fast speed all the way up to 30 and slow speed only on 5. So when the camera is simply moving around, it's decently slow, but if I hit shift key while I'm moving here, we have quite the speed boost. As you can see, you can fly through any props because we are in free cam, you can see under the map here, and you can do whatever you want. And then for head mode settings, interpolitation, whatever that word means, the lower you have this, the more your camera will kind of glide to where you're looking. So if we have it all the way down on one, you can see when I look around, the camera takes about a second to catch up to where I'm looking. And if I turn this all the way up, then it's a lot more like what it would normally look like. The Modern Director Pack also comes with a few props to choose from. For example, we can get the boom mic, we can get studio lights, which of course are these very bright lights which can illuminate the area and put, go back onto your character as you record. And something I only just found out, despite how long I've been using this now, you can grab these and press the trigger, and as you can see, you can change the light color on them. And there's a bunch to choose from, basically every color in the rainbow. And then we can also find ourselves a green and the blue screen if you want to do any special effects. These are just little small things you can do. And once again, there's the boom mic. And just like that, you're ready to go and make awesome films in BoneLab. And that right there is how I record my scenes in MonoDirector. Hopefully this video helped you guys, and if it did, make sure to hit, leave a like and hit the subscribe button. And with that said, I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. And a big thank you to AdamDev slash NotEnoughOils for putting tons of hard work into this mod and allowing me to use it early. You've really made a difference in the BoneLab content creation scene. And also a large thanks to all of my current supporters. Vexy, Juju and Chris, Shub, HandVR, Torsky, Flamzy, Matanaz, Frosty the Beastar, XZ, Coles Tunes, Pie Lover, Harry Lol, Boardman Zick, Hunter, MVPZ, Mystery, Flipper Flopper, Lieldo, Sardellini, Purge Flyfox, Yoshi Cooper, Sage of Kindness, and Oddo. You guys are the best.